Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flader Mouse. We've got another test tube torture test. The comments on the last test tube torture test video were very positive, and I very much appreciate that. Not only does it give me new ideas for things to try, but it just encourages me to continue doing these things. Today we have motor oil, which is a suggestion that many people have given me. It's just, it's not a synthetic oil, it's just regular old 1030 weight motor oil and uh, yet another suggestion was to put a container of water under the test tube so when it erupts and takes off it'll shoot hopefully make it into that container we know how my aim is so we'll see if I can even hit that huh now the boiling point of motor oil is about 572 degrees Fahrenheit or 300 degrees Celsius now, I'm kind of cheating here because I put about five milliliters of water in the test tube, which is at the very bottom, as you can see, and it's starting to boil and it's starting to agitate. And you can see the convection currents really well as it emulsifies with that motor oil. Now, I actually prefer using just pure ingredients in these test tube torture tests, but we've, we've noticed things in the past you know like the STP no matter how hot we got it we couldn't get it hot enough to uh, boil and eventually expand into a gas to create enough pressure and you gotta play a balancing game here you gotta heat it up at a rate where the heat can be pulled away by the material inside there if you heat it up too quickly well the glass will actually melt because it's so thin and it'll actually bulge out and kind of pop like a zit. Now we know that water has a tremendous expansion ratio. That means it'll expand 1600 times its volume going from a liquid into a gas, into a vapor. Now materials like motor oil only has an expansion ratio of about 150 to one going from a liquid to a gas. Plus, it has to get to a much hotter temperature of about 2,000 degrees to do that. So that's why we have to cheat here by adding the water. It's just not possible to do without just melting the glass. It only took about two and a half minutes from the time when I lit the torch until the time it erupted. And look at that, I actually hit the target for once. Didn't go in straight, but at least I hit the target, huh? Now we didn't see a fireball, we didn't even see the torch being extinguished, which is usually caused by a displacement of oxygen from the vapors inside the test tube just snuffing out the flame. Now I was expecting the test tube to shoot to the very bottom of the container and create like an explosion, but that's kind of the surprise for me here because it only went in a couple inches before it just disintegrated. We got a little better resolution with this camera. This is our Sony RX10 II high-speed camera operating at 960 frames per second. And this camera, you have to hit the stop button within two seconds to record the prior two seconds that it has pre-recorded. So that's why the camera's all moving all over the place. It's like, hey, it blew up, quick, push the button. So that's why the camera's moving around. I really need some kind of a remote button for that thing. I don't know if they even make it. And this is the aftermath. We really didn't see a lot of motor oil all over the place. It was mostly contained in our water container. And here, once drained out, this is what the test tube remains look like pretty much shattered once it hit that cold water.